in Canada, small modular reactors have generated a lot of interest, uh, particularly for provinces like Alberta and Saskatchewan, who don't have hydro. And we have Ontario has the uh, a project already underway for a 300 megawatt SMR, and it's supposed to be uh, uh, on market or on uh, on the grid by 2028 to be the North America's first. Don't know if it's on budget. Don't know yet if it's on schedule. We'll see how that works out. But I want to talk about uh, SMRs with Ed Hurst, who's a uh, energy economist at the University of Houston. So, Ed, give me your take. Are SMRs a thing? Are they likely to be a thing? Or is this going to be uh, a failed experiment? No, SMRs really are a thing. Uh, they are very useful uh, and, and should be fairly reliable for reliable, consistent 24-7, 365 electricity needs. Uh, we've used them for more than, well, 70 years now in nuclear-powered submarines and aircraft carriers in the United States Navy. Other navies have used them as well. Uh, the issue has been converting this technology to commercial use. But, you know, there's no question that the, the upfront capital cost is significantly more than it would be for a, a natural gas-fired power plant. But the designs are getting to the point where I think they're they're very competitive with coal-fired power plants, which I don't think we're going to be building any of in, in the near future in North America. Uh, the next large reactors would be the AP-1000s that Westinghouse has put together. Those, of course, suffer from significant cost overruns at the Vocal plants, but have been put into operation. And, and while they have a huge upfront capital expense, looking ahead, you know, amortizing that, spreading it out across an 80-year operating life, it becomes a lot less day by day. Uh, China has, has dozens of these AP-1000s under uh, construction, including their own version, the CAP-1000. Um, a 300 megawatt reactor is, of course, a, a, a kind of a, a tweener. Um, you know, most of the SMRs we're kind of thinking about in the U.S. are 100 megawatts or, or smaller. So Dow, Dow Chemical has uh, contracted for four of these 80 megawatt reactors in its Seadrift, Texas uh, chemical facility. What kind of evidence do we have that these uh, the SMRs will work? I mean, we had uh, uh, New Scale, uh, for example, had a project out in Utah that last year had to be canceled because costs uh, ballooned and they uh, and they weren't uh, their cost per megawatt wasn't uh, megawatt hour wasn't competitive anymore. Um, and a lot of people said that this is indicative of where SMRs are going. They they really are not going to become competitive in the near future. What's your take? Well, we'll just see, have to see how the engineers can make them competitive. Um, SMRs uh, have a benefit over the the big, huge facilities because the the large ones the uh, uh, that operate with the low enriched uranium have to be refueled. They need it's a lot of people moving around. Uh, the SMRs, on the other hand, are are, are sealed. It's highly enriched uranium. Um, they can be sealed for 20 to 30 years, put into place and, and operate without, without much attention. So, I, you know, it's, it's really just an issue of manufacturing and, and probably bringing scale to that manufacturing to get it going. Okay, so we've seen this on the uh, clean tech side, you know, with uh, wind, solar, and batteries all have been scaled up. The manufacturing has been scaled up, and thanks to learning curves, we've seen their costs come way, way down. Do you expect that the uh, SMRs, uh, once they get begin to get to scale, will see the same kind of cost reductions? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, they won't just be a onesie, twosie operation. You know, building a hundred of these uh, will absolutely lead to to scale economies. And and even with the large, larger uh, nuclear power plants, we've seen that in France, where you know the, there's a country that made it a strategic initiative uh, now more than fifty years ago to get as much of its electricity from nuclear. I think they get you know somewhere north of seventy percent right now as they they commission new plants and retire old plants, but it. For a long time, it was more than 80% of their, their daily electricity needs was 
that by standardized nuclear power plants. Now, here in the U.S., we've we've got a tendency to tinker with everything, and so building a new power plant, even if it is a design that was done ten years ago, five years ago, it's subject to just a de novo regulatory review, and um, that that leads to higher cost. I'm curious to get your view on what uh, a nuclear power plant, the, the price at which it has to produce a megawatt hour of electricity to be competitive. Because the um, in interviews with other folks, they, they've said, look, a uh, not all megawatt hours are are the same. Uh, or value have the same value because uh, if, for example, you know you're providing firming uh, or other ancillary services to the to the grid in addition to producing a, a you know a megawatt hour that you sell, uh, that's a actually a higher value. And is given that SMRs in the sense that they're more like a, a coal plant or a, a gas plant, in you know they're twenty four seven on. Is does that make them particularly valuable at a time when the American grid is kind of creaky? Well, it, it certainly does help, and and really the concept you're talking about, we economists call consumer surplus. Uh, you, you know, the heart surgeon values the electricity at this moment a lot more than you and I do, and a lot more than we would in the middle of the night as well. Uh, and so, providing this stable. Uh, reliable resource does have additional value for the grid at large. Um, you know, certainly it can't compete with uh, any kind of, uh, of electricity resource that has zero cost of fuel and very few employees. Uh, but now if we layer on the requirement of reliability, we layer on the requirement of low carbon, um, uh, a low, low footprint, if you will, uh, a concentration, uh, you know, 20 acres instead of 18,000 acres. Yeah, you know, now we we have different dimensions that we can consider in terms of the cost of, the, of this nuclear power. Now, the reason the data centers kind of like this is because they're already taking electrons and reselling them to us in subscription services. So they have a model in place where they can charge us for, for electrons and smarter electrons, if you will. They'll take the, the ones that are, are um, uh, unschooled and uninformed from the power plants, uh, imbue them with all sorts of wonderful knowledge and, and allow them to, to work for us. Let That's worth something. Let me translate your economic speak. Uh, Ed. Okay. I mean, basically what you're saying is that the, the data centers uh, provide a service, you know, it's so much money, uh, per month to store your photos or chat GPT. Uh, you right. know, a lot of that's becoming more popular. And so does that mean that uh, because they have uh, a product that they can sell and generate revenue, that they're willing to pay a little more uh, to like set up an SMR so that they know the power is going to be there and they know what price it's going to be there. And getting the lowest cost uh, electricity is not maybe for them, as important as reliability. Exactly. So they're not only you know, making use of the service, they're providing a service. And, and so we're, we've all been frustrated when the internet goes down. Uh, you know, Cloudfare was hacked uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and it, it had a huge impact across you know, Amazon Web Services. You know, today is Cyber Monday. So for, for those viewing this a little bit later, it was slow to hook up for the interview today. Um, and so the ability to, to provide the reliable uh, turnaround of electricity is important. And so uh, here is not only a, a, a company that makes use of the consumer surplus in terms of the ability to charge out a value add to the consumer, but, but they can profit from it. So they're running essentially an arbitrage on electrons. They buy them cheap and, and sell them dear. Well, Ed, uh, thank you very much for this insight into SMRs. There's a lot of interest in this in Canada, and uh, we're looking with interest at what's going on in the States. So thank you very much. You're welcome.